how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. It is that time again. We are at the end of the year and I'm here to talk about my personal best of beauty for 2023. I have a pile of makeup next to me. These were my favorite things of the year. I did want to narrow it down a little bit, especially because with eyeshadow palettes, my full 2023 ranking is coming very, very soon. So I didn't want to be like redundant and repetitive. I feel like that would be silly. And I also want to give you like more of a reason to watch the ranking so you can see like what my top favorites are. But I did include a couple palettes as well, just because I did want to shout out like my top favorites. I'm not going to tell you what order they are in my favorites though, just because you'll be able to see in the ranking, like what my number one, number two, number three, so on is. Um, so I did narrow it down a little bit again, palette specifically. I feel like if I were to talk about my favorite palettes of the year also, it would be an entirely too long video and that's what the rankings for so with narrowing down palettes and then talking about my like absolute favorites I realized I was like I can absolutely just turn this into a best of beauty 23 of my favorite makeup products from 2023 I thought that would be kind of a fun twist on this type of video just to curate it down a little bit and talk about my top tier favorites I have quite a few things next to me, 23 to be exact, and I am very excited to share it with you. Before we hop into it, I did of course film this look. It should already be up on my Instagram and YouTube shorts by the time this video goes up. And as far as my accessories go, these earrings and this necklace are from the brand Suki Blade, and this ring is from a boutique in New York. So yeah, without further ado, we are just gonna hop into it. I'm gonna share all of my favorite things from 2023 with you. I'll have everything linked down below as well as any discount codes if I have any and let's just hop in so 23 things are next to me here i do have one honorable mention at the end of the video so technically like an extra one there but 23 main things we're gonna dive into it i'm just gonna go in the order that i do my makeup and we're gonna talk about everything first things first primer i have only just recently started using this one and i'm really excited about it it's the elf liquid poreless putty primer i am obsessed with this this feels so silky smooth on the skin i loved the original putty primer but one of my complaints was i didn't like having to like dip my fingers in a jar i so much prefer this medium i like that it's so liquidy and glidey and silky it just feels so good on the skin for reference i have normal to dry skin um, and this works beautifully for me. I feel like it just gives you such a smooth base. I compare other primers with it. I've yet to have something not behave well on top of this. This is so good. This is for sure gonna become one of my top favorite primers. And then I actually have a second primer. I'm surprised and I actually don't have any anymore. I need to pick more up, um, but I'll pop a picture here. It's the Freck Rich Bitch Primer. I use this every single day when I got it until it was gone. It's so good. It's like the perfect combination of grippy kind of tacky but also really nourishing feeling it's a really interesting texture when you pump some in your hand and if you were to kind of do like this like little stringy bits kind of come off just because it's kind of tacky it is so nice i feel like it's so moisturizing it sinks into the skin such a beautiful primer like truly one of my top favorites i've ever tried moving on to the foundation-y realm i really didn't try a lot this year i'm really I'm just not someone that feels the need to hoard foundations. I don't need to try a ton. I'm happy with what I have, but I did try this one out that I fell in love with. It's so good. Um, this is the Glossier Skin Tint. I know this isn't new. It's just new to me. This mixture next to me is going to be just things that I personally tried in 2023, whether they came out in 2023 or I just finally got around to trying it this year. That's to be determined, but I know this one's not brand new. It's been around for a while, but finally got around to trying it. It's the perfecting skin tint mine's in the shade g12 this is just such a beautiful sheer skin tint i personally love a like sheer to light coverage when it comes to like my foundation -y type products i love a skin tint love light coverage i love just like a very natural natural to dewy finish like i love a dewy finish but i'm also very happy with a skin like natural finish and i feel like that's what this gives me i am wearing it today you can't really tell because it's so sheer but i feel like it just gives my skin the perfect amount of like something i feel like it just makes my skin look a little bit better a little more enhanced slightly more evened out it's just such a good base if you don't like sheer light coverage you would hate this but if you're like me i think you would love this i also feel like this mixes really well with like liquid highlighters or serums or moisturizers or even other foundations if you really wanted to like sheer something out that was like more full coverage i think this is so good i don't know why i slept on it i think they also came out with another foundation this year 
like kind of recently that I kind of want to try, but I'm also like, I don't need to hoard a thousand foundations. So I think I'm good for now, but maybe in the future, I'd love to know if you've tried the new one. Cause I, I love this one. I think it's so good. Moving on. This is probably my absolute favorite of the year. Like if I had to pick one singular product that like stole my heart, it might be this one. I think I'm going to repurchase it until the day I die or until it gets discontinued, whichever happens first. Um, it's the rare beauty under eye brightener. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe I love this as much as I do. It's in the shade light. It's on this little like metal ball applicator. So it feels really cooling when you kind of target it under your eyes. I also do like to use it on my nose a little bit just to like add a little bit of highlight after I've done like bronzer and stuff like that. This is so good. The way it melts into the skin, it mixes with concealer beautifully. I even wear this by itself on no makeup days sometimes if I just want a little extra oomph under my eyes, if I'm feeling a little extra sleepy. Um, this is so good. I have used this every single day since it got sent to me back in the spring. I am obsessed. I will absolutely buy another one when it runs out. Honestly, I'm worried that it's getting kind of low. So part of me wants to buy one like super, super soon, but I'm going to try to just go as long as I possibly can before I buy another one. This is just amazing. I, when I first started using this, or even when I first saw what it was, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna care about this. Like, I don't really care about under eye brighteners. It's just not something I usually use. Anytime I do, I don't feel like it does anything for me. But then I tried it and I was like, I kinda like it. And then I just kept using it and kept using it. And then I'm like, I can't see myself ever not using this. <laughs> it's just so good. I think it's just the formula. It's so lightweight and blendable. I feel like other under eye brighteners I've tried are a little bit thick. Something about this is just amazing. I feel like it truly adds a little bit of brightness and highlight without it being like overkill. Like it's not a highlighter. It just gives you a little boost and I love it. It's truly one of my favorite things I've ever tried. <laughs> I don't know why it became such a game changer for me, but it really did. It's like a staple part of my routine now. Next up, this is another fairly new one, but it's the e.l.f. Halo Glow Contour Wand. I only just picked this up like a month ago when I picked up the putty primer and I love this. This is probably my new favorite like liquid cream bronzer like I've ever tried. Like I think it's completely dethroned my Rare Beauty bronzer stick. I just love this. It's on this little like squeezy guy like you squeeze it and it comes out on this little ball and then you can just like draw it on your face wherever you want the product to be. And then I typically use a sponge. This blends out like a freaking dream. Mine's personally in the shade Fair Light. I think it's a really great color. It's like the perfect level of like shadowiness, but not too gray. Cause even though like a contour is supposed to mimic a shadow, I don't like when it leans too gray personally. I feel like this is kind of a good bronzer contour hybrid for me. Not too warm, not too cool. It's like a perfect neutral blends like a dream. I specifically love it on my nose. I don't know what it is. There's just something about the applicator and the way it blends out. This just looks so good. I've yet to have this cause me issues. I feel like it just melts into the skin and it looks so good. I think I'm going to use this until it's gone. I honestly don't see myself putting this down <laughs> anytime soon. I think it's so incredible. I've had a couple of you tell me that this is pretty superior, but the blush and highlight ones aren't as superior, but I would love to hear just more insight if you've tried the contour wand versus the blush and highlight ones. Like, what do you think? I don't think I'll try the highlight one just because I'm not a cream or liquid highlight girly, but if it's something you think I have to have and you're obsessed with it, let me know. This is amazing. It's truly one of my top products of the year. Obviously it's in this video. <laughs> Next up for blush, I was able to narrow it down to a palette and a cream. Um, the cream that I chose was the Sigma one. Um, I, this shade specifically is Corda Rosa, but just in general, Sigma launched some cream blushes and they are absolutely amazing. Like they're just so creamy and so beautiful. I feel like they have really good pigmentation on the skin and they just blend out and look so luxurious. I like the finish a lot. It's very like natural on the skin. It's not overly dewy, but it's not matte either. This melts in with my foundation and stuff so beautifully. I feel like this lasts really well as well. Overall, I'm just really happy with it. I find that blush is one of my favorite parts of makeup. I already loved their powder blushes and I'm so happy they came out with creams because this one is top tier. Next up, it's actually the blush I'm wearing today, just a little bit on the nose and kind of in the high points of my cheeks, but Blend Bunny came out with blush palettes. They came out with the juicy cheeks and the bare cheeks, but 
If I had to pick an absolute favorite, it really might be the bare cheeks. It kind of just depends on my mood. The juicy cheeks is very like bright and out there, very juicy, very summery. And this one is much more like still kind of colorful, but like muted colorful. And this is just the one I think I'm going to reach for the most. I'm obsessed with the baby pink one right now. I literally can't get enough, but like love me is amazing. I really like this neutral, like mixed with other things. This like terracotta brown. Oh, it's so good. And I really like these punchy colors. They're so beautiful. I feel like they're really, really pigmented, but they blend out with such ease. And you can also go in with a light hand if you don't want a ton right off the bat. I don't feel like these are difficult to use at all. I think it's such an amazing formula. So happy that Blend Bunny has expanded so much this year. I feel like they have just like taken the makeup world by storm. They're one of my favorite brands of all time. And I'm so so, so happy to see this. Next up, um, Freck got dethroned as far as freckle products go. Um, this is the Nabla Freckle Marker. I've had this in my cart in Ulta for a long time and I finally picked it up when I was getting low on my Freck XL. I was like, let me just try something new. Now's a good time. It's more affordable. Might as well give it a shot. And I am obsessed. This is my new favorite freckle product of all time. Like, Never say never, but I don't even know if I'll ever buy Freck again, just because this one is so much more affordable. And I think I like it just overall so much more. Like the formula is so good. It's on this little like felt tip, like little guy. And you just kind of dot it around and then pat it out with your finger. Similar application to Freck, except Freck is more of a brush tip. And I just feel like this one, like you get just a different amount of product on there. I love the color. I love the way it taps out on the skin. This is an amazing, amazing freckle product. I don't know how I lived without it up until this point. Moving on to highlighter, I'm definitely currently in my phase where I haven't really been using individual highlighters. I've just been using eyeshadows in palettes. Like whatever palette I'm using, if there's like a light highlighty shade, that's the one that's going on my face too. Um, but out of all the like single highlighters that I've tried, this one does stand out to me. This is the Unearthly Low Light Highlighter in the shade Twilight. Um, it looks like this. I did scrape my like stainage off, similar to the Fenty one. These are very similar, um, but after like dipping my dirty little fingers in there and like mixing product with my brush and stuff, it'll get like a tint to it. So I, I scrape the layer off every so often. So it's like brand new and clean, um, but this is so good. It's basically just like, wet looking and sparkly. Again, very similar to Fenty's. The Fenty How Many Carrots Diamond Bomb is my number one favorite. This formula is more, a little more powdery than the Fenty one. I feel like the Fenty one is more of a putty texture, not a cream. Like I still use it like it's a powder, but it's just a little more bouncy, a little more plushy like a putty. Whereas this one is just a straight up like powder. I mean, it's hard to even like tell. I feel like you can tell so much more in person and like, if light is shining on it or if you're in the sun specifically. I'm wearing it on my face now. Maybe I can use my flashlight to kind of show you. Oh yeah, you can see that. See how sparkly? It's just beautiful. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite kinds of highlighters to wear because I love a sparkly highlighter, but I don't necessarily always want like a chunky glittery highlighter, even though I do like a glittery highlighter. This is like the perfect kind of highlighter for me. This is the kind of highlighter I always travel with because it's a clear base. So it literally will match anything you do. And then it just gives you that wet diamondy sparkle. I love it. This is so good. I I'm obsessed. <laughs> Everything in this video I'm obsessed with. Moving on now to eyes. I guess we will just go into eyeshadow palettes now. I narrowed it down to five. These are in my top palettes of the year. I'm not even gonna say that they're necessarily all top five because there could be a repeat brand in my top five. I'm not gonna confirm or deny. Um, but these live somewhere amongst my top palettes. I wanted to pick a different brand for each of these five palettes and just really shout these out. These are ones that made an impact on my makeup life. <laughs> I feel like these are ones that I could see myself reaching for time and time again. I could see myself traveling with these. I already have traveled with a couple of these and I just love them. I think they are so freaking good. In no particular order, um, first is the Odin's Eye Stone and Rock palette. This collection, the George Divine with this one and the I don't remember what it's called, the purpley one. <laughs> this was such a good launch and I love the Stone and Rock. Oh, it was called Jewels and Gem. That's what the purple one's called. But Stone and Rock is so good. If you know me at all, these are my colors. I love like a swampy, grungy, witchy vibe. And that's exactly what this gives me. I love the grungy greens. I love all the beautiful shimmers. There's a really good 
like ratio of like depth in here. There's just, oh, the most mouth-watering dingy shades. I think this is such a top tier palette. Next is Shad Cosmetics Moonfall. This one launched at the very beginning of the year and it's honestly just still like such an impactful palette to me. I love Shroud with my whole heart. They're one of my favorite brands for sure. Um, I have two collabs with them. Um, and this one is just absolutely incredible. I love all the different mattes and shimmers. She did originally release like a version of these three shimmers as singles and then the four mattes on the outside as singles and then decided to turn it into a palette because a lot of her following was asking for it. So she made it a palette. She beefed up the shimmers, added these two shades, the new matte and the new shimmer. And now it's this beautiful, grungy, jewel-toned situation. It is so pretty, and I love it so much. Uh, next up, this one stole my breath away. This is the Basic Witch by Bella Beauty Bar. It's so good, look at it. It's so beautiful. I love a witchy palette. This is so beautiful. I feel like I will continue saying it. <laughs> but if you missed out on the original Lunar Beauty Moon spell that was limited edition years ago, and you have a hole in your heart for that color story, this is kind of that same vibe, just kicked up a hundred notches. These shimmers are insane. These mattes are beautiful. They really have beefed up their matte formula this year and I'm so happy to see it. Bella Beauty Bar has truly become one of my favorite brands in my whole collection. I feel like I'm never disappointed with anything I try from them. And this is, I think my number one favorite palette they've ever done. I think it's just unbeatable. It's beautiful, amazing, I love it. Next up is the Cosmic Brushes Muse palette. This is beautiful. This was actually my first palette I ever tried from the brand. I bought it when it launched and I am so impressed. Since then, I have eventually picked up the Serenity palette. I picked up Delicious Delights. I recently picked up the Winter Wonderland and Gothic. I'm actually wearing Winter Wonderland today. This is becoming one of my favorite brands as well. I think they are so good. Their mattes are so buttery and pigmented and impactful. I feel like I never have an issue blending. I'm obsessed with every look I create. I've taken this one traveling with me. I love the shimmers. They look, I mean, you can see they look so wet on the lids. Their color stories are just phenomenal. I am so excited about this brand and I can't wait to see what they do in the future. This one is not only just like a favorite palette of the year, but a favorite brand because this brand is new to me and I'm so happy I finally got around to trying them. They've definitely changed my makeup collection for the better. And finally, the fifth and final palette that I wanna talk about in this video, but again, stay tuned for my full 2023 palette ranking that'll be coming at the very end of the month. I try to push that as far to the end of the month as possible so it's as accurate as possible. I don't wanna accidentally miss a couple palettes because I did it too early, um, so that'll be coming, and I'm very, very excited for you to see it. But the fifth and final palette is the Harvest Moon from Ensley Rain. This is also a new brand to me this year and I've been very impressed. The quality is really nice. This palette is stunning. I took this to Colorado back in October because it's just like grungy fall feels to a T. These mattes on the bottom are everything I need and all these shimmers are so pretty. There's a couple hollow shades in here. They're all so shifty and sparkly. And I'm really, really intrigued by this brand. I think they're doing good. I think their color stories are really fun and I'm excited to see more. Moving on, keeping with eyes for now, I did wanna shout out the Moonlit Metal Toppers from Menagerie. I just grabbed one shade, but I have so many shades. I don't even know how many shades, probably close to 20. Um, this one's the shade Monstera and it's so good. It's just like a glittery, sparkly situation. It kind of has like a pinky shift to it. Um, the brand has like commissioned me to do a couple swatch pictures where I take like one of their liquid lipsticks and layer whichever topper they want me to over top for them to have some pictures for their brand. And they work really cool on the lips as well. They're a little like dry, but no more dry than like a super matte liquid lip. Like it's not super uncomfy or anything, but I personally love wearing these on the eyes. They are sparkly and amazing. I feel like they stay put really, really nicely. They just add that special little mix of sparkle to your look. I like popping them like just in the inner corner. I'll slather them all over. This is a really cool formula and they've come out with so many good colors. <laughs> on the topic of eyes, before we move on to lips, I just had to shout out Bright Lashes. This is Angela Bright's lash brand and I 
am obsessed. Whenever she did her Sigma collab for her palette, when I got that PR package, it included a pair of her lashes from her brand and I got to finally try them. Um, I've only tried her half lashes specifically. I am a half lash girly through and through right now. They're just so comfortable and easy to wear. Um, and I am obsessed. I used that pair until it died. I bought four or five more pairs from her. I used all of those until they died. I recently bought more on Black Friday. They are so good. The pair I'm wearing right now is Flutter. These ones are kind of getting on their last leg. I think they might only have a use or two left. This is what Flutter looks like in the package. I also have Flirt. Flirt is really good. I think Flirt and Flutter are the only ones I bought on Black Friday because I think those are my top two favorites, but all four of the half lashes I tried are really good. They're really good quality. They're amazing synthetic lashes. I feel like they're a really good price point. They last a really long time as long as you take care of them. I always like try to pluck them off my eye as nicely as possible and then I'll lightly take the glue off of it and then I'll reuse them until they're literally falling apart. I love them. This is probably my favorite lash brand right now and I just had to shout it out because they've become like a staple part of my makeup routine now is making sure I have these lashes on deck. Finally, moving on to lips, I have seven things to talk about. This was a good year for lips, I gotta say. Um, first being Lawless came out with lip pencils and these are some of my new favorite lip pencils of all time. I'm wearing one right now. I don't even know what shade I'm wearing right now. I think it's this one, Honey Rose with a gloss over top of it, obviously. These are so beautiful. The shade that I have here is Cinnamon. I think Cinnamon's my favorite. It's just like a beautiful, like warm, rusty color. It's beautiful. Um, and yeah, they're creamy. They glide onto the lips beautifully. I think the range of pencils they came out with is really, really good. And I am just such a lip pencil person. There was a time when I was so anti-lip pencil, but now I love them and this is one of my favorite formulas. Like it's definitely up there with Rare Beauty for me. Next up, um, I have mostly glosses here. I have a regular lipstick and then I have like a lip cream. So let's just go with glosses first. Uh, the one I'm wearing right now, this is from the Heather Austin and Unearthly collab. It's the gloss in the shade Omen. I mean, I'm wearing it right now, but it looks like this. It's just like sheer with sparkle. I might have a little tint in that from my lip pencil, but this is beautiful. I love a sheer sparkly gloss. I just love that like micro sparkle. <sighs> it smells like vanilla. It's so good. Like I'm pretty sure, I mean, I can't be certain, but I'm pretty sure when Heather was like, helping come up with this gloss for her collab. She said, what would Betty Jean like the most? <laughs> because this is just such a top tier gloss. I'm pretty sure this wasn't ever sold individually. I think you had to buy it as like the full bundle. But if you're someone that owns this gloss, I hope you share as much love as I do for it because it's just so good. It's like sheer and slippy and so easy to wear. It's not sticky. And I just love, love, love that sparkle. Next up, Blend Bunny came out with lip oils, specifically the ones in the Juicy and Bare Cheeks collection like they went alongside of those blush palettes i'm obsessed this one is in the shade juicy but all six of them are amazing i think i have the clear one in my purse right now i always have one of these in my purse they are just so easy to just throw on they are sheer but they add that little bit of color unless you have the clear one obviously they nourish my lips so well like i have to have one of these in my bag because if like throughout the day my lips start feeling dry i will go crazy i have to do something to remedy the situation. And this just, this does it. <laughs> it adds that beautiful glossy shine like a gloss, but it really sinks in and nourishes my lips. Again, there's the tint there, but I feel like the tint is like, so unassuming that it doesn't really matter which one I have in my bag because they all just offer just like the littlest bit of something, but it's never gonna be so much that it's gonna clash with whatever my makeup clothing situation is. I love these, they all smell so good. <sighs> like juicy candy, like sour candy. It's so amazing. Like gummies, that's what these smell like, like sour gummy worms. I love it. Or at least this one does. They might all have a different scent, but this one smells like sour gummy worms. Next up, I have this one here. This is the Cold Hearted Gloss from Fenty. I did not need this by any means, but I got it as a gift and I'm so thankful for it. I don't even know why I'm swatching it because it's literally clear as you can see. Um, but the magical thing about this gloss is it is clear. It's just a shiny, delicious gloss and it gives you a minty cooling feeling. It's not plumping. So it's gonna give you a similar effect to like a minty plumping gloss where it's like that tingly cold sensation, but it doesn't plump, which I love a plumping gloss. Like that's my favorite thing ever is a plumping gloss but I love that feeling. Like I love that tingle, that minty sensation. And this gives it to me and I love that. It's just the most beautiful, perfect clear gloss. Probably my favorite just plain clear gloss that I have now. 
And I'm so happy I have this, like such a random product that I really like on paper did not need. But now that I have it, I'm so glad that I do. I think this formula is so good. It makes your lips just look so wet and juicy. It's amazing. The last gloss is actually this one. Now I'm pretty sure I tried the Lawless Forget the Filler Glosses last year, but this shade specifically is one of my top favorite shades of gloss in my whole collection. I reach for this so many times. It's in the shade So Me. And thankfully for me, they also recently sent me a jumbo size of this shade that I already loved with my whole heart. And I feel like I have no choice but to like shout it out. Now it's mostly clear. It's the tiniest like pink tint, like just a, a teeny bit of pink, um, but it's mostly clear. It is a plumping gloss. It's gonna give you that plumpy minty sensation and I love it. This makes your lips look so juicy and amazing. Like this is my favorite gloss formula of all time. And I just love this shade. It's so easy to just throw on with anything. It matches anything because it's so incredibly sheer. Like it's basically clear. Love the plumping sensation. Everything about this is amazing. And I had no choice but to shout it out, especially because I'm over the moon excited that I have this ginormous size of it. It's amazing. Sigma came out with these lip creams and they're so good. This one is in the shade Dusty Rose, but I love all, I think five that they came out with. It's a liquid formula but it doesn't dry down like matte. It stays creamy like a lipstick, but I also feel like these aren't like sliding around causing a mess either. I feel like they stay put pretty nicely. They give you that beautiful color, that beautiful creamy, not like overly shiny, but the same kind of shine that like a cream lipstick will give you. I think this formula is really, really good. I've reached for these multiple times since I first tried them, I think a couple months ago and they've definitely become a staple favorite for me. And last, lip products before we get into my honorable mention. Um, Fantasy Cosmetica came out with a line of lipsticks recently in the Lost Library collection, and they quickly became like one of my favorite like lipstick formulas. And like this packaging is so cute. As someone who's a huge book lover, this is amazing. Um, this is the shade Hidden. This is definitely the one I reached for the most. Looks like that. Wow, those actually look really similar. <laughs> Different formula though, so I can justify it. Um, but it's creamy and comfortable. I feel like the pigmentation is there, but it's not gonna smear around everywhere. I feel like they stay put really well while still remaining very comfortable and emollient. They are so good. And the range of lipsticks they came out with is so fun. Like they have everything from like neutral to pink to red to orangey to blue and green. Like they have weird colors and I love it. I really hope they continue expanding this lipstick range because this formula is incredible. I'm very impressed by it. And then finally, last but not least, my honorable mention that is absolutely a top favorite of the year. It means so much to me. It's so close to my heart, but it seems silly to include it in the favorites because it's a given that it's a favorite. But I got to be a part of the Perfect World collection with Odin's Eye alongside of Lauren May Beauty and makeup just for fun. And I am so incredibly like just proud of us. I think we did such a beautiful job and I love all of our palettes. Like this is the Flora story that Amanda did from Makeup Just For Fun. Such a beautiful like dusty garden. And then Lauren May Beauty did the Sea Talk palette. Like if you're looking for Shimmer Central, it is in here. It's so cool. And then my palette, I got to do the Planet Spirit palette. And I went for just a very like bright, colorful, lively, intense kind of palette. I love these colors. I'm so excited. I was really happy that I got to do something to kind of play with my very bright color loving side because my other collabs are very like grungified spooky, which is very much my vibe, but I'm also very bright and colorful and I loved getting to do this. I loved getting to be a part of this with them and doing this with one of my favorite brands. And I just wanted to shout these out. Honorable mention because it is a given that these are my favorites. Um, I just, I can't get enough. And that concludes my best of beauty 2023. 23 things that I loved in 2023. I would love to hear your thoughts. Did you fall in love with any of these as much as I did? What are your top favorites from the year? I would love to know. If you made it to the end of this video, you know, let's continue the trend. Leave 23 of your favorite emojis. I feel like that's a lot, but I want to see who's going to do it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm Batty Bean there as well. And also feel free to subscribe. I'm posting most days over here. Also feel free to join my channel. Memberships link to sign up will be down below. You'll get fun little perks, including a members only video once a month. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.